Okay, last time we talked about what equations you might need if you need to solve for the energy in any given system. So if there's gravitational energy, you can solve for that. If there's kinetic energy, you can solve for that. If there's heat energy, you can... Wait a second. We didn't talk about heat energy last time. That's kind of what we're going to talk about today. We're also going to talk about doing work. Anytime we go from one of these types of energy to another, we know that we're just transferring energy. We're not actually losing energy, we're just moving it from one type of energy to another, either from height to motion, or from motion to deformity, or from deformity to heat. All of these things are just a transfer of energy. Every time you transfer energy from one type to another, you're secretly doing work. Work is the amount, so work is measured in joules, and it is the change in energy. So if I've got a ball on top of a hill, and that ball rolls off, and up here it had 125 joules of gravitational energy, down here it has 125 joules of kinetic energy, the change in work has gone from 125 in gravity to zero. This would be... 125 joules of work. Does that kind of make sense? Well, um, if it doesn't yet, hopefully it will in time. With this idea, we can also calculate heat. So if I know that I have, let's say, a dart, and I've thrown a dart through the air, and, oh, that looks like a strange dart. Start over. Well, let's say that you've got a dart, and this dart's got some little wings on it, and it's got a little pointy part. Yeah, that looks like a better dart. That weird uh, 1950s dart, but it's a dart nonetheless. Let's say that it has 125 joules of kinetic energy as it's flying through the air toward the dartboard. Once it hits the dartboard, it comes to a complete stop. Start again, now it's punctured into the dartboard. I know that I have done 125 joules worth of work because my kinetic energy is 125 here. Here, my kinetic energy is zero. That being said, we can use this concept to determine how much friction there was. All of this energy is now in friction. Um, using this idea, we'll take in another couple steps into solving for friction and solving for values that need friction. But understand that energy, that work is a transfer in energy. That being said, we know that to slow an object, we need to apply some unbalanced force. In this case, like I said here, that force is friction. Another way that we can calculate work is by the amount of force that is applied over a given distance. So if we knew how much friction was a, as a force, and we knew how deeply this dart was embedded, we could determine how much work was done here. The important thing to note is that this force and this distance must be parallel to one another. I can't be doing force in this direction and then changing my direction in this direction um, and, have, and, and be having work done. No. Work is only when I lift something against the force of gravity. Gravity is doing work. My arm is doing work. Um, this is the same direction as the motion. That's the same direction as this distance, this change. So this is doing work. Something like me moving back and forth this way, I'm actually not really doing any work on the marker. Not really. Not in the physics way. In the physics way, I have to be changing my direction in the same way that I'm applying the force. These two things must be parallel. So, just a quick wrap up. Transferring energy is doing work. Work is measured in joules. We can also say that work is a change in energy. When energy goes from one type, like kinetic or gravitational, into another, like elastic or um, heat, 
that is a change in work and therefore work is, I'm sorry, that is a change in energy and therefore work is being done. We can also and lastly say that work can be calculated by some force being applied over some distance. And that's it for today.